Hello and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. Today we will look at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 4 to 6 from the Christian Standard Bible. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. In my last devotional, I encourage followers of Jesus Christ to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which they have been called, and ask God to strengthen their inner self so that they will have humility, gentleness, forbearance, and relational love between them and God and between them and others, especially those of the household of faith, so that our church may be one that promotes unity and peace in a world of disunity and violence. Paul states in verse 3 that we who are followers of Christ are to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Then in verses 4 to 6, Paul discusses this concept of unity in greater detail. As I mentioned before, unity is the main theme of the book of Ephesians, and Paul's main concern is unity between Jewish believers and the Gentile believers. In chapter 2, verses 11 through 22, Paul reminds both the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers that Jesus has brought both groups together through his death on the cross. He came and proclaimed the good news of peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Therefore, both groups are only in the body of Christ because of God's grace. And you and I are also in the body of Christ because of God's grace. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. Paul states in chapter 4, verse 4, that there is one body and one spirit. Everyone who is a follower of Christ is part of one body whether they be Jewish, Gentile, Black, White, Hispanic, Asian, Arab, etc. The Spirit makes all of us who are followers of Christ one, and He is the sign of the new covenant, the covenant that God made with those who follow Christ through His shed blood. And we who are followers of Christ have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, signifying that we are part of the body of Christ. We have also been called to one hope. This hope is that through Christ, we who are followers of Christ will one day be redeemed, creation will be redeemed, and there will be perfect peace among creation, God, and the body of Christ. This is the only hope that we have, and this is what we patiently and joyfully look forward to. There is also one faith, which is our faith in Christ, and the teaching that Christ gave to us, which has been recorded to us in the New Testament. Finally, there is one baptism. As Paul states in Romans 6, we who are followers of Christ die to our old sinful inner self, and we are raised with a new inner self that desires to please God. Through a baptism, we are also united with him so that we can live each day in a way that pleases God as we allow the fullness of God to dwell in us. This baptism is the only way that we can become part of the body of Christ. Finally, Paul gives us, who are followers of Christ, the most important reason for the unity of the body of Christ. It is because the Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Father are all one, even though they exist in three persons. Here in these verses, we have a great example of the Trinity, the Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Father, and all of them are one. We as followers of Christ are also part of one body, even though each of us is an individual. Christ is the head, and we all submit to his headship, and Christ submits to the headship of the Father. Therefore, the Father is our Father, and he is over all, through all, and in all. Walk, therefore, in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Be a person of peace, which demonstrates the unity of our church and also the unity of the whole body of Christ, so that others in this world of disunity and violence may see our unity, glorify God the Father in heaven, and be drawn to Christ. Let us pray. 
Lord God, we pray indeed that we might put away everything that divides us, Lord God, that we might not complain or criticize others or think bad thoughts of other people, Lord God, but we might do all we can to be unified together in our church and that we might together proclaim Christ to those around us, Lord God. We so desperately need unity and peace in our church and in other churches throughout the United States because there's so much disunity and so much violence around us, Lord God. Help us to be instruments of unity and peace for your name's sake, Lord God. We pray that we might be one, even as you are one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.